We attribute this view of no one is wiser than Socrates to the oracle, rather different from saying that Socrates is the wisest, the superlative, the best, the one who stands above all others. And so Socrates goes from his initial interpretation, which was Socrates is somehow superior to all other people in terms of wisdom, but he says, I know that's false. So he goes out on this quest, right? This is the source of the origin of his quest. I'm going to find the wiser man. The oracle said, I'm the wisest. I know I'm not the wisest. I know I'm not superior to other people. And so I'm going to find I'm going to quest to find a wiser man. And this is what leads to his career of Socratic questioning. I question people who are thought to be wise. Everybody thinks that, that so-and-so is wise. Homer, of course, Homer, Homer's long dead by this time, but Pericles, people thought Pericles was, was wise. Socrates' life overlapped with Pericles. As we can imagine a younger Socrates maybe interrogating Pericles in public. I question people, what does he discover? We've got a sort of a circular movement here because he comes eventually to his second interpretation of what the oracle says, which is not Socrates is superior to all other people, but something else. Questions people, what does he find? They're not wise, but they think they are. They are so proud of their wisdom. They are so certain that they really have got the truth and the wisdom. And so, and here's where we begin to suspect there's a little bit of irony or trolling going on with Socrates. I decided in service to the God to show them that they were not wise. I'm going to show them the problem with their belief that they are wise. This is the source of my bad reputation. I got this message from the God through Caraphon, through the Oracle, suggesting that I was wiser than everyone. I decided to prove that it was wrong. I discovered that it wasn't wrong in some sense because there's a whole lot of people out there who pretend to have wisdom who don't. And so in addition to discovering that they are not wise, I show them they, that they are not wise. And as a result, they hate me okay? because they think that I've taken away from them something important. Another result of this, the youth, he does all this in public, does all this in the marketplace, at the banking tables, right, on the steps of the, of the temple. Grab hold of Euthyphro and say, Euthyphro, I, I need to know what piety is. Tell me about piety. Teach me what you know. Or you might go to Pericles and say, Pericles, you are reportedly the greatest statesman of all time. Tell me about justice. Tell me all that you know. Teach me all that you know about justice. And then we discover half an hour later, Pericles doesn't have any idea. Euthyphro doesn't have any idea about this stuff. It's all been pretense. It's all been like the rhetoric that we were taught, that we were warned about at the beginning. It's all been just show. Socrates claims he's discovered. So in the course of this quest, he discovers that reputedly wise people are not wise. He shows them this error. As a result, he tracks the hatred of the elders and the admiration of the youth. Okay, a certain kind of idle, wealthy, young man would follow me around the marketplace. You imagine Plato might have been one of these people. Alcibiades was one of these people who studied Greek history. There are many of them. These are you know, the sons of the elite, and they enjoy a good laugh as much as anything else. Let's go watch Socrates knock Pericles down a few pegs. Let's go watch Socrates question one of the comic poets and expose his lack of wisdom. We can all have a good laugh. Socrates is going to say, this is not my fault, right? These people, not my fault. I mean, I, I'm just talking to people, serving the God, trying to help them improve their lives by giving this up. What's the conclusion here, right? They, they, um, they come I'm the one who's better off. I'm wiser than to this degree. What I don't know 
neither do I think I know. I know that I don't know. Back to the idea of level one and level two ignorance that I introduced earlier. These people, right, seem to have both level one and level two ignorance. I just wrote I1 and I2 on the circles. And we talk about they don't know, and they also don't know that they don't know. They are ignorant of their lack of knowledge. Socrates says, I'm at the very least trying to point out to them their level two ignorance so they can fix their level one ignorance. So his conclusion here, his second interpretation, he rejects his first interpretation as just being, being false. I'm not better than everyone else, but what was the oracle meaning? Socrates knows that human wisdom is worth nothing, and so you should adopt him as a model. That human among you mortals is wisest, who knows that his human wisdom is worth little or nothing compared to the wisdom of the gods. Part of what Socrates is trying to do here, of course, is to flip the script and to turn an accusation of impiety into proof of his own piety. I actually am the pious one. I'm the one who's serving the god. I did this only by command of the oracle. There's some irony here, obviously, where he'd like to turn the sort of um, persecution mania of his accusers against them and say, hey, guess what? You are offending the god Apollo by trying to prosecute me. Back off. This is, that, that's sort of at a surface level. But deeper than that is this first question that I raised.